Today's topic for the discussion is Anatomy of the Forearm. This is Dr. Yusuf signing from Aljof University. These are the specific objectives on which this lecture is based. The first one is demarcate the compartments of the forearm and enumerate the contents of each. The second is study the arrangements of the muscles of each compartment of the forearm and give their actions and nerve supply. And the third is describe the flexor as well as extensor retinacula regarding their attachments as well as relations. So these are the specific objectives on which uh, this lecture will be based. To begin with, uh, as we have already studied the arm, so some of the features we know. So that the arm is divided into two compartments, an anterior compartment as well as the for posterior compartment. This is the, uh, the level at which this section has been cross-section of this arm is taken and this is the, the flexor compartment and this is the extensor compartment. Okay. Similarly, even the forearm is, uh, if you take a section at this uh, level, then you can see there are two compartments, an anterior compartment or it is also called as the flexor compartment and then there is a posterior compartment also called as the extensor compartment. And these two compartments are divided uh, in compartments by the presence of two bones here. In case of arm, there is only one bone that is the humerus. In case of the forearm, there are two bones here that is called as the, the radius and the ulna. In the next picture, if you see here, these are the, the two bones. This is the radius and this is the ulna. And in between, there is a thin membrane called as the introsious membrane. So whatever is anterior to this, this will be called as the anterior compartment. Whatever is posterior behind this, uh, uh, the two bones as well as the introsial membrane, that will be called as the posterior compartment of the forearm. And on the sides, this uh, 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 compartment is again divided uh, further by the presence of the intermuscular septum here which extends from the bone up to the, the deep fascia similarly on either side just like in case of the even in the arm there is the intermuscular septum which will divide the anti compartment posterior compartment here the two bones with the presence of introsious membrane and on the sides we have the intermuscular septum all this will uh, divide the whole of the arm into an anterior compartment here in the front uh, which will be called as the flexor compartment and the posteriorly we have the extensor compartment. To begin with, uh, we'll first discuss the flexor compartment of forearm or the front of forearm. Then we'll discuss the extensor compartment of the forearm, that is the back of the forearm. Uh, the forearm, if you see, it extends uh, from the elbow joint to the wrist joint. So this is a very superficial description because the muscles which are of the forearm, they are actually the superficial muscles, actually they take origin from the lower part of the, uh, the arm. Uh, from the, uh, to be more exact, uh, the, uh, the lower part of the humerus. Okay, so from the medial epicondyle as well as the, the lateral epicondyle. So uh, the muscles will be extending beyond the elbow joint. Similarly, the muscles of the forearm extend into the hand from the forearm. So they will be going beyond and get inserted there in the hand. So that's why most of the muscles. So uh, uh, they will be crossing the uh, wrist joint also. Uh, so uh, this description that it extends from the elbow joint to the wrist joint is a very superficial description. If not, the muscles will be extending much more beyond. Okay. So in the flexor compartment of the forearm, uh, there will be eight muscles. And in the extensor compartment, there are 12 muscles. Totally in the forearm, there are 20 muscles. Out of 20 muscles, 8 are in the flexor compartment, that is the front of the forearm. And in the back of the forearm, that is the extensor compartment, there are 12 muscles. So the flexor compartment of a forearm uh, is divided further into superficial group as well as the deep group. The superficial group will have around five muscles and the deep group will have be having the three muscles. We'll go in detail about those uh, muscles. Okay. If you compare the flexor compartment to that of the extensor compartment, uh, the flexor compartment, as I said before, it is made up of eight muscles compared to the extensor compartment, which is made up of the remaining muscles. Those are 12 muscles. 
so the number of muscles in the extensor compartment is much more compared to the flexor compartment which is made up of only eight muscle but still if you see the bulk of the muscle the flexor compartment is much more bulkier compared to that of the extensor compartment and this is helpful uh, helpful for the the power of grip okay so uh, coming to the blood supply of the forearm uh, both extensor and flexor compartment together it is supplied by two main arteries that is called as the radial artery and the ulnar artery so the radial and ulnar artery are called so depending on uh, the side on which they are present that is the artery which is towards the uh, uh, radial that will be called as the radial artery and which is towards the ulna will be called as the ulna artery both are branches of the brachial artery we have seen the brachial artery in the uh, arm so this will extend into the cubital fossa and from there into the forearm and the, uh, this will be having two branches now okay so the brachial artery finally divides into radial and ulna artery in the cubital fossa and these two arteries will be supplying the uh, the whole of the uh, the uh, forearm flexor as well as the extensor compartment as well as the ulnar artery will be giving an additional uh, branch that will be called as the introsious artery or the common introsious artery which will again divides into the anti and posterior introsious artery and this will be supplying the anti introsious artery will be supplying the uh, the deep structures in the for uh, the flexor compartment of forearm and the uh, the uh, posterior introsious artery will be supplying the the extensor compartment of forearm uh, before we proceed further into the flexor compartment some general rules uh, some important points to be remembered are the first is the all the superficial muscles i said there are eight muscles in the flexor compartment of forearm and they are divided into two types superficial and deep the superficial are five muscles and deep are three muscles um, if you see the uh, origin of all the superficial muscles they will be actually uh, 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 coming from the the uh, the uh, from the uh, the lower part of the humerus and it will be taking origin from a common point uh, that is called as the the medial epicondyle of the humerus so this is called as the common flexor origin the medial condyle of the uh, the medial epicondyle of the humerus condyle will be within the cavity so the epicondyle so the medial epicondyle of the humerus will be called as the the common flexor origin because all the uh, muscles the superficial muscles of the flexor compartment they will be taking origin from the uh, the uh, from the uh, the medial epicondyle of the humerus so because they take origin from the medial epicondyle of the humerus if they want to enter into the forearm they have to cross the elbow joint so all the superficial muscles which are taking origin from the medial epicondyle of the humerus will be crossing the elbow joint but the deep muscles they will be taking origin directly from the the forearm itself not from the so all the deep muscles of the uh, flexor compartment of forearm they do not cross the elbow joint because they will be taking origin directly from the forearm so only the superficial muscles will be crossing the elbow joint and they will be taking origin from the medial epicondyle of the humerus which is also called as the common flexor origin uh and also these muscles all the muscles of the forearm they will be crossing the wrist joint except one muscle called as the the first muscle that is the pronator artery so which is one of the superficial muscle except this muscle all the muscles of the uh, flow of, of uh, the forearm uh, the flexor compartment of forearm will be extending into the wrist joint except the pronator arteries so uh, as i said before uh, the extension of the uh, forearm from the elbow joint to the wrist joint is a very superficial description and the muscles will be crossing both this joint and going beyond that okay uh, as i said uh, there are eight muscles in the superficial compartment uh, 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 the flexor compartment of forearm including the superficial and deep superficial of five and uh, deep are three Uh, out of these eight muscles uh, only one and a half muscle one muscle and the remaining part of the half muscle of the flexor compartment of the flexor digitorum profundus one of the muscle deep muscles of the uh, the forearm as well as the flexor carpi ulnaris these two muscles will be supplied by the the ulnar nerve 
So only the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus will be supplied by the ulna ulnar. So it is half and one muscle called as the flexor carpi ulnar. These are the two muscles which are supplied by the ulnar nerve. All other remaining six and a half muscles of the eight muscles are supplied by the median nerve as well as its branch that is called as the anterior interosseous nerve. So these are the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, this is the nerve supply of the the flexor compartment of forearm. So as I said before, out of eight muscles, almost six and a half muscles are supplied by the ulnar nerve and its branch that is the anterior interosseous nerve, and the remaining one and a half muscle. Uh, which is the flexor carpi ulnaris, which is one of the the flexor uh, the superficial muscle, and the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus will be supplied by the the ulnar. Okay, so medial half of the just remember this is the medial half. The lateral half is again supplied by the the median nerve. So the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus is supplied by the ulnar. So it becomes half, and the remaining muscle is the flexor carpi ulnaris, which will be supplied by the uh, ulnar nerve. Okay, all remaining muscles are supplied by the median nerve. So the main nerve of the flexor compartment of forearm will be the median nerve. Now coming to the uh, uh, some more details of the uh, this uh, flexor compartment of the forearm. As I said, the super, uh, it is divided into superficial group as well as the deep group. Superficial group uh, consists of five muscles. So the five muscles uh, uh, are similar to that of the uh, the five fingers of the hand. If you keep the the uh, palm of the hand on the medial epicondyle of the humerus and spread it just like like this in this picture, and then it looks as though the five muscles are. Uh, from the flexor compartment which are taking from the medial epicondyle of the humerus so the first one will be the pronate arteries so here are the five muscles this is how it looks like so they are all taking origin from the uh, the medial epicondyle of the humerus these are the superficial muscles the first one is the pronate arteries then the second muscle is the flexor carpi radialis this is the flexor carpi radialis the third muscle is the palmaris longus it is a long muscle with a long tendon so that's why it is called as palmaris longus and it extends into the forearm as palma aponeurosis so this is one of the degenerated muscles we will talk about that uh, then the fourth muscle is the flexa carpi ulnaris this is the flexa carpi ulnaris uh, uh, then we have the flexor digitorum superficialis deep inside we have the flexor digitorum superficialis these are the five muscles which are uh, the uh, belong to the superficial group of the flexor compartment of the forearm now let's uh, discuss each muscle in detail some more details okay the first one is the pronate arteries this is the smallest muscle uh, in this flexor compartment uh, of superficial group so this is the pronate arteries here okay so this muscle as like all other uh, superficial muscles will be taking origin one of the origin of this muscle is from the the uh, medial epicondyle of the humerus which is also called as the common humeral origin okay so this is the the uh, superficial origin of this muscle then it will be also taking origin from the uh, deep ulnar head especially from the medial margin of the uh, coronoid process of the ulna below the sublime tubercle so it will be also taking origin from the this is the ulnar head of the pronate arteries which will be taking origin from the the medial margin of the coronoid process of the ulna okay so this will be the two heads of the uh, the pronate arteries superficial head from the medial epicondyle of the humerus and the deep one will be taking origin from the margin of the coronoid process of the ulna okay this muscle will get inserted uh, as i said all the muscles will cross the the wrist joint except this muscle the pronate arteries which will be inserted uh, within the forearm in the uh, medial one third of the lateral surface of the shaft of the humor of the radius this is the radius uh, so it is in the middle one third of the lateral surface middle one third of the lateral surface of the uh, shaft of the radius so this is the shaft of the radius so it will be in the lateral surface okay so this will be the insertion of this muscle uh, the pronate arteries the nerve supply as i said most of the muscles will be supplied by the median nerve so this is also supplied by the median nerve coming to the actions because it crosses the the elbow joint 
so this will be mainly acting on the elbow uh, one is it acts as uh, uh, the it helps in pronation because it is taking origin from the medial side and goes all the way toward the lateral side so that's why it is called as pronator so because it helps in the pronation of the forearm okay so one function of this muscle is pronation of the forearm and because it crosses the elbow joint it also helps in the flexion of the elbow joint so these are the two important functions of this muscle called as the pronator arteries the smallest muscle among the the superficial muscles of the flexor compartment of forearm going to the next muscle that is the flexor carpi radialis so this is the flexor carpi radialis a long muscle in the previous picture also you can see this is the the flexor carpi radialis okay so this muscle will be also taking origin from the same medial epicondyle of the humerus that is the common flexor origin and this will be extending into the forearm it is a bulky muscle with a big belly and this will go crosses the uh, the both the the elbow joint as the, well as the wrist joint and it will be inserted into the the basis of the second and third third metacarpal bones the metacarpal as you know it has three parts the head the shaft and the the base or the uh, the main uh, lower part that is called as the the base of the uh, this bone okay the head the shaft and the base and this will be inserted this muscle that is the flexor carpi, carpi radialis will be inserted to the base on the the flexor aspect okay this is the flexor aspect and on the opposite will be the the dorsal aspect okay so this will be on the flexor aspect move towards the base of the uh, the metacarpal bone that is the second and third the metacarpal bones are counted from the lateral to medial starting from the thumb this will be the first this is the second third fourth and fifth starting from the lateral side will count one two three four five these are the uh, metacarpal bones okay so this will be inserted it will be split into uh, two tendons and get inserted to the basis of the second and third metacarpal bones the nerve supply uh, as like other muscles this is also supplied by the median nerve and this muscle the actions of this muscle as it crosses the, uh, the both the, the elbow joint as well as the wrist joint it will have actions on both the joint at the wrist joint mainly because it is crossing and getting inserted immediately after that crossing the carpal bones getting inserted to the metacarpal so it mainly helps in the, uh, the flexion of the wrist apart from that it also helps in the, the flexion of the elbow and the third function is it also helps in the abduction of the hand along with the radial, the radial extensors the abduction of the hand is moving the hand toward the lateral side so there is adduction as well as abduction there are four movements at the wrist joint one is the deflection as well as extension of the wrist joint as well as the adduction and abduction so adduction will be toward the center and the abduction will be toward the lateral side as well as we can also have some rotation there at the wrist joint so this muscle because it is getting inserted to the lateral side so it helps in the abduction of the uh, the wrist joint along with the or the hand you can say along with the the uh, the radial extensor the extensor muscle which are on the the extensor compartment so these are uh, the some of the functions of the the flexor carpi radialis this is the second muscle uh, after the pronator arteries coming to the third muscle a very interesting muscle that is called as the the palmaris longus so this is the palmaris longus behind the flexor carpi radialis this is the palmaris longus the name itself indicate a lot of things so it is longus because it has a long tendon it is said to be one of the degenerated uh, muscle because it has a long tendon as well as small belly and this will extend into the forearm and then it get inserted within the the palma aponeurosis that is an aponeurosis a, a modified uh, uh, defacia which will be uh, uh, within the hand and this get inserted to the same so that's why it is said to be a degenerated tendon or a degenerated muscle with a long tendon this is called as the palmaris longus the origin again this muscle will be taking origin from the same side that is the medial epicondyle of the humerus common flexor origin and it as i said it will be uh, uh, pa it passes through the forearm and then it enters the 
the hand and it get inserted to the distal half of the flexor retinaculum this is the reflexor retinaculum a modified diffasia again here and then into the apex of the palmar aponeurosis if you see the palmar aponeurosis this is how it looks like it is triangular in shape with the apex here toward the wrist joint and the base will have four slips going to the four digits Uh, the action of this uh, muscle because it is crossing the uh, the uh, elbow joint it will be a weak flexor and the main function is at the wrist joint it helps in the flexion of the wrist joint because it is crossing the wrist joint and getting inserted to the palm upon neurosis so that's why it will help in the flexion of the wrist joint uh, the fourth muscle is the flexor carpi ulnaris forearm that is the flexa carpi ulnaris here in this picture if you can see this is the flexa carpi ulnaris in the previous picture if you see um, here is the flexa carpi ulnaris it is toward the ulna side so that's why it is called as flexa carpi ulnaris flexa because it is in the flexa compartment carpi because it is going through the digits as well as ulnaris because it is toward the ulna side so uh, this will have two heads one is the uh, from the uh, the regular that is the medial epicondyle of the humerus that is the common flexor origin then it also take origin uh, from the ulna so it has an ulna head from the medial margin of the olecranon process this is the olecranon process on the medial side uh, uh, especially uh, from the medial part of this olecranon process as well as the upper two thirds of the aponeurosis attached to the posterior border of the ulna if you see there is a posterior border which is much more behind to the posterior side so that is called a posterior border uh, where it will be uh, um, modified into aponeurosis and from there it will be taking origin from the uh, the posterior border so it will be taking origin from the medial epicondyle of the humerus as well as the the medial margin of the olecranon process on the medial side here deep inside here as well as in the upper two thirds of the posterior border of the ulna where it will be uh, uh, having an upper neurotic origin so this will be the muscle now this muscle will be uh, on the medial side and it runs downwards and it will enter it crosses the wrist joint and it enters the uh, the hand and this will be attached to the pisiform bone here these are the carpal bones pisiform bone as well as the hook of hamet as well as it will be uh, attached to the uh, or get inserted to the the uh, base of the the fifth metacarpal bone so this is the fifth if you count from the lateral to medial side is the first second third fourth and this is the fifth so it will be attached to the base of the fifth metacarpal bone and on the palma side so this will be the insertion of this bone uh, this muscle okay flexor carpal nervis it will be attached to the pisiform bone or inserted to the pisiform bone as well as hook of hamet as well as the the uh, the uh, the base of the Uh, metacarpal fifth metacarpal bone okay this is the insertion of this uh, muscle that is the flexor carpi ulnaris sometimes the uh, they say that the pisiform bone is within the tendon of this uh, this muscle so pisiform bone is said to be a small bone because it is within the tendon of the the uh, this muscle so this is the pisiform bone which is a small bone and it is said to be so small because it is within the tendon of this muscle okay so it will be inserted to the hook of hamet as well as the the base of the uh, fifth metacarpal bone if you imagine that the pisiform bone is a small bone so it will not be the insertion but you should mention that it is uh, inserted to this as well as to all other two bones that is the hook of hamet as well as the the base of the fifth metacarpal so this is about the muscle the origin and insertion coming to the nerve supply this is the uh, muscle uh, which is completely supplied by the ulna nerve so as i said there are only two muscles which are supplied by the ulna nerve in the flexor compartment one is this muscle flexor carpi ulnaris and the second one will be only the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus that we will discuss later okay so which is a deep muscle now coming to the actions because it crosses the wrist joint so it will be uh, flexing the uh, uh, wrist as well as because it is within the compartment of the flexor 
flex a compartment so it is will be flexing the wrist the second important function is because it is on the medial side whenever it, it contracts along with the the extensor muscles which are on the medial side that is the external carpi ulnaris so that will be helping in the the adduction of the uh, the hand okay so i said if it is moving laterally at this wrist joint that will be called as abduction and if this hand is moving toward the medial side then it will be called as the adduction so these are two movements which will be there along with the flexion and extension as well as even there can be some rotation so this muscle because it is on the medial side flexor carpi ulnaris as the name indicates so it will help in the adduction along with the extensor carpi ulnaris this is the flexor carpi ulnaris and on the extensor compartment which we will study later it will be the extensor carpi ulnaris on the extensor compartment which together with the flexor carpi ulnaris helps in the adduction of the hand the third important uh, 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 thing is that as i said before it is fixed to the pisiform bone and uh, uh, some say as i mentioned before it is uh, within the tendon of this flexor carpi ulnaris okay and this is also crossing the uh, the elbow joint so it also helps in the uh, it acts as a weak uh, flexor of the uh, the even the elbow joint okay these are some of the functions of the flexor carpi ulnaris now going to the last muscle in the superficial compartment that is the flexor digitorum superficial this this is a huge muscle a big muscle uh, it has a big origin as well as even the insertion will be big we'll discuss this uh, in detail the first origin of this muscle is from the the same the uh, the head of the uh, uh, the the medial epicondyle of the humerus that is the uh, the common uh, uh, flexor origin okay then it will be also taking origin from the the ulna so this is called as the ulna head it will be taking origin from the ulnar collateral ligament here there will be collateral ligament as well as the there is a small tubercle here on the medial side that is called as the sublime tubercle on the medial border of the this is the coronoid process of the ulna so on the coronoid process medial side there is a tubercle called as sublime tubercle so this will be taking origin from the not only from the medial border as well as it will be taking origin even on the from the sublime tubercle this is the the ulna head then it also has a radial head this will be so as i said it has a big origin it is taking origin from three bones from the humerus from the ulnar as well as the even the radius it will be taking origin from the anterior border of the radius here is the anterior border of the radius and this will be taking origin from the the upper two thirds of the anterior border of the uh, the the uh, radial head okay and the pronator teres if you have seen already that will be inserted on the lateral side of this muscle okay so insertion of the pronator teres will be here and this origin is from the, the anterior border of the uh, the radius okay so this is the origin of this muscle uh, from three bones the head of the, uh, the uh, sorry um, the medial epicondyle of the humerus as well as the, the coronoid process on the medial side as well as the sublime tubercle as well as the anterior border of the uh, the radius okay and uh, between the ulna head as well as the radial head uh, it will be having a fibrous arch so it will be also some of the fibers will be coming directly from the fibrous arch so this is the fibrous arch between the radius and the ulna so this is the whole origin of this muscle and this will be uh, passing uh, through the muscle and uh, deep to the flexor retinaculum and then it splits into four splits into four tendons and it will be going to four uh, 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 medial digits that is the second third fourth and fifth as you know uh, we count the digits uh, in the hand from the lateral to medial side. so starting from the thumb uh, this thumb will be the first this is the second third fourth and fifth so this will be dividing four digits and uh, it splits into four tendons as you can say uh, the two superficial as well as two deep the two superficial will be going to the second and uh, the third and the fourth and the deep will be going one will be to the the second and the uh, fourth one will be to the fifth okay and then it passes through the uh, the metacarpal as well as the uh, proximal phalanx then it goes to the middle uh, phalanx and then it splits into two it splits into uh, the same uh, 
uh, tendon will split into two and it get inserted to the either side of the the uh, the uh, the middle phalanx so it will be inserted to the shaft of the either side of the middle phalanx this is the proximal phalanx this is the middle phalanx and this is the distal phalanx there are three phalanges in each in each digit except the thumb where there are only proximal and distal here it will be proximal middle as well as distal so this tendon will be splitting into two and it get inserted to the either side of the shaft of the middle phalanx on the palmar surface so this is the insertion of this uh, muzzle and the nerve supply is by the, uh, the uh, as uh, those of all the muscles most of the muscles of the uh, forearm flexor compartment that is the medial nerve the coming to the actions uh, it will be uh, acting mainly because it is crossing this joint here this is called as uh, the uh, this is between the the metacarpal as well as this is the phalanx so this is called as uh, the metacarpophalangeal joint then this is the joint between the two phalanges proximal as well as the middle so this is called as uh, the the proximal interphalangeal joint because it is between the two phalanges it is called as uh, the interphalangeal joint this is proximal and here uh, because there is a distal here between the middle as well as the distal phalanx this is the uh, distal interphalangeal joint so this is called as uh, the proximal phalangeal joint so this is crossing the proximal phalangeal joint so this acts as the main flexor of the proximal interphalangeal joint because it is crossing the proximal interphalangeal joint and getting inserted to the the shaft of the either side of the uh, the middle phalanx okay so that's what is crossing the proximal phalanx and uh, proximal interphalangeal joint and this will be the, and the this is the site where it will be mainly acting all these are the uh, the proximal interphalangeal joint so it will this tendons will be acting on the uh, it helps mainly in the flexion of the this proximal interphalangeal joint it also crosses the metacarpophalangeal joint so it also helps in the flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joint it is also crossing the the wrist joint so it also helps in the flexion of the wrist joint and uh, it also crosses uh, some part of this muscle also crosses the elbow joint uh, so it has a very weak uh, flexion at the elbow joint apart from that the main action will be at the proximal interphalangeal joint as well as the metacarpophalangeal joint then also uh, to some extent into the uh, the wrist joint okay so these are the five muscles which will be uh, uh, present in the superficial compartment okay now going to the the uh, the deep group of muscles there are three muscles the first one is the the flexor digitorum profundus the flexor digitorum profundus there is the muscle which is deep to the flexor digitorum. we have seen the flexor digitorum superficialis now this is the flexor digitorum profundus then we have the second muscle which is on the the uh, radial side this is called as uh, the flexor pollicis longus flexor pollicis longus the names all itself uh, indicate a lot a lot of things so uh, we will discuss that okay then the third is called as uh, the pronator quadrata this is the deep inside this is the pronator these are the three muscles one is the uh, flexor digitorum profundus this is the muscle then we have the flexor pollicis longus this is the muscle and deep inside we have the pronator quad uh, quadratus these are the three muscles which are present in the deep group of the the flexor compartment of the forearm Now let's go to the uh, the uh, the first deep muscle that is the flexor digitorum profundus. If you see in this picture, this is the flexor digitorum profundus. As we know, the deep muscles don't cross the elbow joint, so they don't take origin from the uh, the uh, the common flexor. Uh, site that is the media epicondyle so these all these three muscles are taking origin directly from the uh, the forearm okay so they don't cross the uh, the elbow joint and they are not taking origin from the the humerus so these all these muscles will be taking origin within the forearm so the first muscle is the flexor digitorum profundus this will be taking origin from the the upper and uh, three fourth of the anterior surface of the uh, the uh, the ulna so uh, upper three fourth of the anterior surface as well as even the medial surface because it has uh, it will be taking origin much more going towards the medial side so it will be taking origin from the upper three fourth of the anterior surface as well as the medial surface of the shaft of the ulna this will be also taking origin from the the posterior border from where even the if you have seen observed before the flexor carpi ulnaris was, was taking origin 
from the posterior border upper three fourth of the posterior border uh, in the form of a aponeurosis. So there are three muscles which will be taking origin from the the posterior border of the ulna uh, by an aponeurosis. Uh, we have seen uh, one of them is the flexor carpi ulnaris. This is the second muscle that is the flexor digitorum profundus, which will be taking origin from the posterior border upper three fourth of the ulna. Then this also take origin from the medial surface of the olecranon as well as the coronoid process of the ulna. So this is the the medial surface of the corona uh, the uh, the coronoid process and the olecranon process is behind. Okay, so it will taking origin from the the coronoid process as well as the olecranon process the medial side only from the medial side. Then this muscle uh, also take origin from the the uh, introsious membrane. So if this is the introsious membrane, this is a thin membrane which is between the radius and the ulna. So this will be taking origin even from the, the some part of the medial side of the, uh, the uh, introsious membrane. Okay, so this will be the origin of this muscle. So this muscle has a big origin from the upper three for the anterior surface of the ulna, uh, medial surface of the ulna, as well as the posterior border of the ulna, upper three fourth, as well as the, the anterior surface of the uh, introsious membrane. So this will be the origin of this uh, flexor digitorum profundus. As the name indicates, name indicates a lot of things. Okay, so if you observe the name, it itself will give you many clues. One is it is the flexor, so it is one of the muscles of the flexor compartment, deep muscle. Then it is called a digitorum because it goes and get divided into four di digits. Split it splits into four septas and then get inserted to the four digit that's what is called a digitorum okay so this is called as the flexor digitorum profundus because there is one more muscle which is superficial to that that's why it is called as flexor digitorum superficialis and this is called as the flexor digitorum profundus <laughs> now this is the origin of this muscle the muscle as i said it will be uh, passing uh, uh, through the uh, the forearm and it passes deep to the flexor retinaculum and it splits into four tendons and then it get inserted to the uh, goes to the four digits and if you see here as it passes through the uh, the metacarpal and phalangeal joints if you can see here this will be passing through the two slips of the flexor digitorum superficialis if you had observed in the flexor digitorum superficialis will be splitting into two two, two slips in each digit and that get, then get inserted to the the middle phalanx on either side on the shaft of the middle phalanx on either side okay so it splits into two uh, slips and this stand on flexor digitorum profundus passes between the two slips and get inserted to the the distal phalanx base of the distal phalanx and palmar surface so it get inserted to the palmar surface of the base of the distal phalanx of the the second third fourth and fifth remember the thumb is paired both by the flexor digitorum profundus as well as superficialis this uh, superficialis as well as the profundus will be getting inserted only to the second third fourth and fifth uh, digits not to the thumb okay so because the thumb has separate muscle we'll discuss that okay so this is how it is getting inserted the flexor digitorum superficialis will be splitting into two and getting inserted to the middle phalanx shaft of the middle phalanx okay and the flexor digitorum profundus passes between the two slips of the flexor digitorum superficialis and passes beyond crosses the distal phal interphalangeal joint and get inserted to the base of the distal phalanx or the palmar surface so this is how the muscles the flexor digital superficialis as well as the profundus are arranged in the uh, in the uh, are getting inserted in the hand okay coming to the nerve supply then the nerve supply of this muscle is unique that it is the medial half is supplied by the ulnar nerve along with the flexor carpi ulnaris these are the only two muscles which are supplied by the ulnaris and this muscle only half of that only the medial half will be supplied by the ulnar nerve and the lateral half will be supplied by the anterior introsious nerve which is again a branch of the median nerve so the lateral part is supplied by the median nerve and the medial part is supplied by the the ulnar nerve so this is typical feature of this muscle a single muscle supplied by the two nerves now coming to the actions uh, as you can see because it is crossing all these joints so it will have uh, action on all these joints 
first is it will be having action on the distal interphalangeal joint distal interphalangeal joint is between the middle phalanx and the distal phalanx because it crosses this joint so it will have action so it will be flexing because it is in the flexor compartment so it will be flexing the, the distal interphalangeal joint as we had seen the flexor digitorum uh, superficialis will be acting mainly on the proximal interphalangeal joint and this will be acting on the distal interphalangeal joint the typical feature is this muscle cannot act alone at this joint first the flexor digitorum superficialis has to uh, co contract and it has to uh, flex at the proximal interphalangeal joint then this muscle will act on the, the distal joint uh, distal interphalangeal joint and then flexes so if you can uh, see your own try to flex at the distal interphalangeal joint it will not unless the the proximal interphalangeal joint is uh, flex initially okay without flexing the proximal interphalangeal joint you cannot flex the distal interphalangeal joint okay so these two muscles will be acting simultaneously with each other okay so it will be acting at the distal interphalangeal joint to flex as well as it will be also acting along with the flexor digital superficial is on the proximal interphalangeal joint as well as the metacarpophalangeal joint as well as even the the wrist joint all these deep muscles they don't have any action at the elbow joint because they don't cross the joint okay so whenever the muscle has to act on a joint it has to cross the joint okay so that is the formula <laughs> okay this muscle because uh, these two muscles the flexor digitorum superficialis as well as the profundus are mainly uh, inserted to the digits so these muscles are said to be the gripping muscle they help in the gripping of anything okay so these two muscles together they are called as the gripping muscles the flexor digitorum superficialis as well as the flexor digitorum profundus so here again you can see this is the flexor digitorum superficialis and deep to that will be one more muscle this is called as the flexor digitorum profundus if you remove this muscle then you can see deep inside will be the flexor digitorum profundus okay along with this there is also an important muscle along with the flexor digitorum profundus this is called as the flexor pollicis longus as the name indicate it is a flexor muscle as well as pollicis pollicis means the the uh, the thumb okay thumb is called as the pollicis and it is called a longus because there are short muscles which are within the uh, the hand which will be taking origin as well as getting inserted to the pollex that is the thumb so they are called as brevis and because this is coming from the forearm and getting inserted to the thumb so they are called as longus so that is the difference between the longus muscle and the brevis brevis means short muscles which are within the hand and get inserted there okay longus means they will be taking origin from a different area like here in the case of this uh, flexor pollicis longus from the forearm and then getting inserted to the hand okay so this is the flexor pollicis longus so this muscle will be taking origin from the anterior two-thirds of the shaft of the radius this was taking origin from the anterior surface as well as medial surface of the ulna and this will be taking origin from similarly from the anterior uh, two-thirds or uh, three-fourths of the anterior surface of the shaft of the radius and it will be also taking origin from the the anterior surface of the uh, the interosseous membrane the lateral half the medial half will be taken by, by the flexor uh, digitorum profundus and the lateral half of the interosseous membrane will be uh, helping in the origin of the flexor pollicis longus so this is the origin of the flexor pollicis longus then this muscle again this will also pass uh, over the wrist joint below the flexor retinaculum and then goes to the thumb and it get inserted to the distal phalanx of the uh, the base of the distal phalanx of the thumb just like that of the flexor digitorum profundus where it is going into the distal phalanx and getting inserted to the the base of the distal phalanx similarly this flexor uh, pollicis longus also get inserted to the base of the distal phalanx of the the thumb okay the palmar surface okay the nerve supply is by the anterior interosseous nerve which is a branch from the median nerve so this is also supplied by the median nerve the action mainly it will be acting on the thumb because it is going and getting inserted to the thumb so it will be mainly helping the flexion at the distal uh, interphalangeal joint okay uh, uh, there is no proximal distal because there is only uh, uh, two phalanges okay 
So this is the proximal phalanx and distal phalanx. So in between, there is, this is the interphalangeal joint. So we can just say uh, the interphalangeal joint of the thumb. Okay, so it will be mainly acting at the interphalangeal uh, joint of the thumb and helps in the flexion because if this is the flexor muscle, so it helps in the flexion of the, the interphalangeal joint. Okay, also it also helps in the, uh, to certain extent because it is crossing all other joints also. So it also helps in the, the flexion at the uh, metacarpophalangeal joint as well as to some extent even the wrist joint okay so this is about the second muscle among the three muscles of the deep group of the flexor compartment one is the flexor uh, digitum profundus the second is the flexor pois longus and now we'll talk about the third muscle that is called as uh, the pronata quadratus this is the muscle here pronata quadratus here you can see this is the muscle which is almost uh, obliquely placed in the uh, the forearm front of forearm so this is the pronata quadratus this is the pronata quadratus which helps as the name indicates it helps in the pronation okay and it is called as quadratus because of the shape it is quadrilateral in shape so this is called as pronata quadratus we already seen one more muscle which is also called as pronata this is called as pronata teres which is one of the the first muscle in the superficial uh, compartment of the forearm okay so this pronata teres as well as the pronata quadratus together they help in the the pronation of the forearm okay now coming to this uh, pronata quadratus here again you can see here this is the pronata quadratus this uh, muscle will be a quadrilateral muscle and this will be taking origin from the lower one fourth of the anterior surface of the ulnar so it will be taking origin from the uh, lower one fourth of the anterior surface of the ulna okay as well as this will be inserted to the uh, the uh, lower one fourth of the anterior surface of the radius so it will be taking origin from the ulna lower one fourth and getting inserted to the one fourth of the the radius as well as this is about the superficial muscle the deep muscle uh, the deep fibers of this muscle go to the medial side okay if they go the deep fibers will be going to the medial side and get inserted uh, into a triangular area just above the ulna notch so ulna notch is on the radius where the the ulna will be in contact with the radius okay so this is called as the here will be the ulna notch just above that there is a triangular surface where the deep fibers of this pronata quadratus will be inserted okay so this is about the uh, the pronata quadratus uh, pronata quadratus origin as well as the insertion Coming, coming to the nerve supply, nerve supply is by the, the anterior interosseous nerve. So if you can see here in this picture, they have shown you the anterior interosseous nerve, which is a branch from the median nerve. This is the median nerve here, thick nerve. It is giving a branch at the cubital fossa and this is called as the, the anterior interosseous nerve, which supplies mainly the deep muscles. Okay. The action of this muscle is mainly as the name indicate it helps in the pronation especially the superficial fibers pronate the forearm and the deep fibers mainly help in the binding of the the two ends of the the radius and ulna it will be holding the uh, uh, the joint that is the radial nerve joint together okay so this is the distal radial nerve joint here will be the proximal so this is the proximal radial nerve joint, this is the distal radial nerve joint. So this deep fibers will be mainly helping in keeping these two bones together. Okay. The other structures, there are other structures along with this, this muscle also helps in the uh, keeping the two, bind the two muscles together. Okay. The superficial fibers will be mainly helping in the pronation along with the pronate arteries. Okay, so this is how the muscle will be acting. This is the pronate artery quadratus, this is the pronate arteries. Whenever they contract, they help in the pronation. Pronation. Pronation is that movement where uh, uh, this can be remembered as the king pronates and the beggar will be supinating. Okay, the, pron the pronation will be done by the king because he is always giving. So that movement, move, uh, movement of giving. Uh, that is called as pronation okay and the beggar will be always supinating always asking okay so uh, here will be the supination this is the pronation movement which is done by the pronata teres as well as the pronata uh, teres and pronata quadratus together and the supination will be done by the the two muscles here one is the biceps brachii and the second muscle which is in the posterior compartment or the extensor compartment of the uh, forearm that is the supinator we will talk about the supinator later okay 
when we discuss about the extensor compartment. So these two muscles will be helping in the supination, supinator as well as the biceps brachii. Okay. Now coming to the last part of this forearm, that is the a very important retinacula which is present. Okay. So this is called as the flexor retinaculum. Here this is the retinaculum which is nothing but the a strong modified uh, band of uh, uh, connective tissue it is nothing but the modified deep fascia okay so this is called as the flexor retinaculum because this is present in the flexor compartment there is also extensor retinaculum which is behind in the extensor compartment so this is called as the flexor retinaculum so this is a strong fibrous band that bridges the anterior concavity of the carp uh, into a tunnel called as carpal tunnel if you see here this is the the uh, flexor retinaculum and this will uh, convert this area into a concavity and that is called a carpal tunnel okay we'll see that picture okay okay so the attachment of this uh, fibrous band uh, on the medial lateral side um, it is unique on the medial side it will be attached to the pisiform as well as the the hook of hamid these are the carpal bones which are on the medial side the pisiform as well as the hook of hamid on the lateral side it will be attached to the scaphoid uh, as well as the the trapezium so it will be attached to the the tubercle of the scaphoid as well as the crust of the uh, trapezium okay on the lateral side so this will be the attachment on either side and there are important structures which will be passing through uh, or below this uh, uh, flexor retinaculum through the, the carpal tunnel. The tunnel which is converted, it is converted into tunnel. If you can see here, this is the cross section taken um, at this level. If you take a cross section at this level and then see, uh, uh, and then you can see, uh, appreciate this uh, flexor retinaculum. So this flexor retinaculum is uh, connected on the uh, uh, to the hook of hamet as well as the tissue form on the medial side, and here it will be attached to the trapezium as well as the the uh, the tubercle of the scaphoid. So it will be attached on the uh, lateral side. So this will be uh, converting when they, uh, this flexor retinaculum contract, it turns this carpal tunnels into a tunnel and there are important structures which are passing through this tunnel one is the flexor digitorum superficialis the four tendons two superficial two deep and then we can see the flexor digitorum profundus these are the two muscles as well as one nerve important nerve that is called a median nerve as well as the flexor carpi uh, uh, the flexor pollicis longus also okay so these are the four important structures which are passing through one is the median nerve the most important is the median nerve which is passing deep to that okay and the palmar branch will be go passing superficial except that the whole nerve will be passing deep to the uh, flexor uh, retinaculum then the second is the the flexor digitorum uh, sublimus which is also called as the uh, the flexor digitorum superficialis then we have the flexor digitorum profundus as well as the flexor pollicis longus all these three muscles will be passing deep to that then there is also two bursas which are passing deep to this flexor retinaculum one is called as the radial bursa and the other is called as the ulna bursa and these are important bursas which will be connecting the forearm to the hand so if there is any infection in the forearm it can pass into the hand or if there is any infection in the hand it can be pass through these uh, bursas into the forearm <coughs> now uh, now we should know why this uh, flexor retinaculum is so important why this retinaculum which is converting this whole region into a tunnel called as carpal tunnel as this you can see here there is the carpal tunnel and the structures passing deep to that uh, we have been mentioned here so why this is important because there is a condition called as carpal tunnel syndrome so sometimes the retinaculum becomes shortened because of some some reason sometimes it can be genetic sometimes might be because of some particular reason when this uh, flexor retinaculum might contract become shortened and this tunnel which is a tunnel this is called as the carpal tunnel and here you can see the flexor retinaculum and these are the carpal bones which are in there okay so this is called as carpal tunnel because it is passing through the carpal bones so these are the carpal bones here 
okay so this will be converted into a tunnel called a carpal tunnel and sometimes if this flexor retina can become shortened or if this sometimes these bones are flattened and they become they become much more come to a higher position then this whole structures all the structures which are within this uh, are uh, getting affected or uh, they will be uh, uh, compressed within this tunnel and this condition is called as carpal tunnel syndrome and especially there is a nerve here this is called a median nerve and this median nerve is totally compressed and that leads to a severe pain in the hand as well as even to some extent into the forearm so this condition is called as carpal tunnel syndrome where the, the structures within this carpal tunnel uh, get compressed and that leads to severe pain because of the compression of the median nerve so this is called as carpal tunnel syndrome so here you can see the flexor retinaculum and this is the the median nerve which is passing due to that most of the nerve except the the palma branch superficial branch which is passing above that so the uh, the main nerve will be passing deep to that so it might be easily compressed along with that we can see the flexor deuterum profundus is passing deep to that as well as the even the flexor deuterum superficial this will be passing deep to this uh, flexor retinaculum okay so this is about the the flexor retinaculum uh, uh, in detail so this is all about the uh, the uh, the eight muscles of the flexor compartment of the forearm five superficial and three deep and we discuss also the the flexor retinaculum so in the next part we'll be discussing about the uh, the extensor compartment of the forearm